So today I was playing around with VirtualBox and Vagrant, and I decided it would be a good idea to upgrade from Ubuntu 14 to Ubuntu 16 without having any sort of backups. After doing this, my virtual machine would no longer boot up, and I didn't have SSH access either. I could no longer access my websites in my browser, and I had no easy way to just go collect those files again. So if I go to VirtualBox and I try to start up this virtual machine, this is a typical thing I would see. My Ubuntu server would hang at the line, non-blocking pool is initialized. So I couldn't get into the machine this way. Let's power this down and then I'll show you how to boot from an ISO image. So make sure your virtual machine is selected in the left hand column and then go to settings. If you now select the system option, you'll see that you can change the boot order of how your virtual machine starts up. I'll enable the optical drive setting and then I'll promote it to the top of the list so it's the first thing to boot. Now go to your settings one more time for this virtual machine and this time select storage. I have a hard disk and an optical drive listed. The hard disk is my corrupted hard drive. The optical drive is an ISO image I downloaded from releases.ubuntu.com. At the bottom of this pane, you'll see an option to add a new storage attachment. This is how you'll actually add the ISO image that you'll be booting from. I wanted to boot from the version of Ubuntu that I originally had on my virtual machine. So I went to releases.ubuntu.com slash 14.04. Then I located the Ubuntu server version that I wanted, and I downloaded it. This download may take a little longer on your computer. I've sped it up for this video so you don't have to wait through it. In this demo, I accidentally download the desktop version of Ubuntu. In reality, I want the server version. Once the download is complete, you can locate it in your finder window. You can see that I've already actually downloaded an image. It turns out this one that I downloaded in this demo wasn't the one I actually used when I restored my virtual machine the first time. Since the AMD64 ISO worked for me in the past, I'm going to use that one for the rest of this demo. OK, let's go back to VirtualBox now. We can locate this ISO image and add it as an optical drive to our storage settings. So in the bottom of your window, click the left hand icon and click Add Optical Drive. And then select Choose Disk. Now search through the files on your computer to find the ISO image you just downloaded. OK, now that you've added your ISO and you've changed the boot order in your system settings, we can start the VM in Rescue Mode. So close out of your Settings window and then right click on your virtual machine and go to start, normal start. This time hopefully your VM boots up and prompts you to select some language settings. I speak English so I'll select English, then I'll scroll down to the last option called rescue broken system. I'll let this boot and then when it's ready I'll select some more language and region options. I'll choose English and I'm from the United States. I don't want it to auto detect my keyboard, I'll just simply select the option myself. So I'll say no and then I'll just select the US English keyboard. Now we'll wait through some loading screens. Yours may take a little longer than this because I sped mine up about two times the original rate. I'll select the Ethernet Zero option. And now my system will try to auto configure my IP settings in my network and DHCP settings. A lot of people run into the trouble here. It all depends on how you have your network set up under your VirtualBox settings. I was able to get mine to work with both a NAT and bridge adapter setting. At the end of this video, I'll show you my current configuration. I left my host name at the default, which is Ubuntu. You can change this if you'd like, though. The system was also able to auto detect that my time zone is New York. Now I need to select the device to use as the root file system. I'll use the default, which is dev slash sda1. And then I'll choose the option to execute a shell in that root file system. And then I'll select continue. Now I should be able to actively type in my shell. So I can type the command cd for changing directory and go to my folder var www and then I have a website called oct underscore pws. If I list the files in this directory, you can see that it's a typical Drupal installation. So what I want to do now is push my code via git to a remote server somewhere so I have it outside of my VM. Running the command git status lets me know that all my changes are already committed and ready to go. I can also run the git log command to see a history of those changes. So now I want to make sure I have a location to actually push this code to. If I run the command git remote hyphen v, it will show all the remote locations I have in my git project. In this case, there are not any established yet. So let's switch over to GitLab where I've created an empty repository as a remote location for us to push this code to. Right on your project page, you'll see some helpful information about setting up a remote on your server. So in your virtual machine, recreate the command git remote add origin and then put in the address to your repository. In my case, it's https 
colon forward slash forward slash gitlab.com forward slash my group name, which is recovery forward slash vm.git for my repository. Once that's been added, if you run the command git remote hyphen v again, you'll see this remote listed as origin. Now let's try pushing our code using the command that GitLab supplied. Write git push hyphen u for upstream, then origin, the name of the remote, and then master, the name of the branch you're on. However, you may see an error that you're unable to access gitlab.com. We can run a quick network test by pinging google.com. You may find that you can't access this either. However, if I do a test where I ping Google's IP address directly, which is 8888, it actually can ping it. So what's really happening is the DNS is just not being resolved. So we can fix this by changing our virtual machine's host file locally. First, I want to find the IP address of gitlab.com. Using Chrome's inspector tools, I'll go to the network tab and I'll reload the page. Here I'll be able to find the IP address information for this website. Once I have the IP information, I'll switch back to my virtual machine and edit the host file. Write sudo because you'll need admin privileges in order to edit this file. Then use the vim text editor and use the location forward slash etc forward slash hosts. Scroll to the bottom of the file using your arrow keys or jump there using capital G and then press O to insert to a new line. Now add the IP address from gitlab.com, put a space and write gitlab.com. This resolves the DNS information to the correct IP address. Save and exit the editor by pressing colon WQ exclamation point. Now try the original git push command we used earlier. That's git push hyphen u origin master. This time it seems to be working. gitlab.com is asking for my username. I'll add this and then I'll add my password. Now I'll speed up the process of transferring the data from my virtual machine to gitlab.com. Once this process is complete, you can switch back to your browser. Now you should be able to reload the project page and see your code there. That seemed to work. You can even go to your repository to check that your actual files are there. Now I'll go back to my virtual machine and go over my network settings. When I booted into rescue mode, you notice that my network configured automatically. If yours didn't do this, you may need to change your settings. So make sure your virtual machine is selected, go to settings, and go to network. Here is the current configuration that worked for me. I was also able to get this to work using NAT. If you have any trouble getting this to work, please post something in the comments and I'll try my best to help. If not, somebody else maybe will have the answer. When you're all set getting your code off your virtual machine, you can just press the X to close this down and just shut down the machine like normal. Hopefully this will save you some headaches if you ever find yourself in this situation. Thanks for watching.